Good morning. Today we're in uh, Matthew chapter 6. We'll be reading verses 19 through 34. Let's pray and we will read. Father God, thank you for providing us for us so richly you know, through your word. Thank you for showing us what it truly means um, to not be in need, to be provided for eternally through your Son. God, I pray that today we would feast on the riches you have provided for us in your scripture, that we would truly know that we have no lack because you have provided all for us. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, let's read. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body, so if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness, and then the light in you is darkness. Uh, if then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? No one can serve two masters, for either he, either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his life, his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. God's word to us to, um, today in the book of Matthew. Okay, what do we see? What do we observe here? So basically, I think what's going to happen here is I'll be summarizing or paraphrasing what he's saying here. Um, so don't collect perishable, uh, perishable possessions, but collect things that will last forever. No one can serve two masters. You cannot serve God and money. Life is more than food. The body is more than clothing. He states that God provides for the birds and the flowers and that we are more valuable than the birds and the flowers. So God will provide for us. He then says, seek God and his kingdom first and God will provide what you need. Don't be anxious about tomorrow. Okay. What can we take away from this passage? On the surface, this passage seems easy. Um, but when you dig in, I think it starts to get uh, more challenging. Because he's saying here, okay, don't lay up treasures on earth, right, where things are perishable. That makes sense. But instead, 
lay up treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys. That makes sense, right? Long-term investment, <laughs> you would call it here on earth. Um, and then he goes into this section that's kind of confusing about the eye is the lamp of the body. And what does this have to do with anything? Um, it seems like a, a kind of weird thing to say in between talking about treasure and then talking about serving two masters, um, God and money being the masters he's talking about not being able to serve. Um, I think though, it actually makes a lot of sense if we really dwell on what this um, comparison of the eye to the lamp really means. Um, so I don't think this is saying that the eye shows others the light that is in us. I think this is saying that the eye allows light to come in to our bodies. It is the gateway through which we either bring light into ourselves or darkness into ourselves. And so if we choose to look upon, gaze upon, reflect upon, basically worship things that are good, holy, upright, honorable, then we will be full of light. If we choose instead to gaze upon things that are not honorable and upright and holy, we will be full of darkness. Likewise, if we decide to gaze upon and desire and lust after things that are perishable, um, that can rot, that are basically based in death, our bodies will be full of death. If we instead desire, decide to gaze upon, worship, um, really focus on eternal things, things of God, then our bodies will be full of light. Which is why he goes right into saying no one can serve two masters. You can't gaze intently. You can't stare at two things at once. You can't allow darkness and light to come into your eyes at the same time. Either you stare at the light or you stare at the darkness. You can't do both. So you can't serve two masters. And here he is clearly saying these two masters are God and money. You cannot serve them both. Then he starts to um, talk about anxiety. Do not be anxious about your life, what you eat or drink. This whole section is very encouraging. Um, I mean, ultimately it's very encouraging. And I think a lot of us read it as very encouraging um, in a earthly temporal way as well. And I think it can be, but I think we make a mistake when we make this all about earthly provision. He was talking to people who did not have a lot. And he says, look, God feeds the birds. God clothes the flowers. He will provide for you too. You are more valuable. But these people would have known, they would have been, they, it wouldn't have even been a question in their mind. They would have known, but people starve. But there are people who are naked. What does this mean, right? In our, in our wealthy, so wealthy culture today, we believe that he's talking about literally feeding and literally clothing. And God does that. He provides. But for these people, who would have known? But they would have known. But people still starve. People still go hungry and naked. I think their vision would have been much more immediately directed to the eternal, which Christ is talking about here. And why do I say he's talking about the eternal? Well, first of all, what I just said, that there are still people who starve. There are still people who are not clothed. And so either Christ is full of 
full of it here. He's lying to these people or he's talking about something else. He says, do not be anxious about tomorrow for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. God will take care of today. And he's got tomorrow figured out as well. However, I don't think Christ is saying here that God is just going to provide all your earthly needs you ever have and that everything will just be fine forever. He's going to make you wealthy. You're going to have a full belly and nice clothes. He will feed you and he will clothe you as long as you are on earth. But your true food is more than just the food that feeds your body. Is not, the, is not life more than food? And your true clothing is more than just the cloth that covers your body. This is important for us to, to get a, a grip on. Because we're coming from a section where he's talking about righteousness and then talking about God rewarding righteousness. And he says over and over again, your father who sees in secret will reward you. And then he goes immediately into talking about don't lay up treasures on earth. So he goes from talking about your reward from your father and not laying up treasures on earth. So I think he's saying your, your reward will not be treasures on earth. Those things pass away, they're perishable. Your reward will be an eternal reward. Your food will be an eternal sustenance, a spiritual sustenance. Your clothing will be the clothing of righteousness. And yes, God provides while we are here on earth. But at some point our bodies die. We pass away and, and our bodies rot. God is not investing. And we should not be investing in our earthly bodies. We spend so much time thinking about what we're going to eat, how we're going to work out, um, you know, like get fit, what we're going to wear, how we're going to present ourselves to other people as far as what, what we're clothed in. And, and being concerned with those things is not a bad thing. He, he does say, you know, um, you know, Take care of today's needs, but tomorrow, tomorrow, don't worry about that. And so I think the, the key of this whole passage is really this, this really almost obscure eye reference. What are you worshiping? What is your eye gazing upon with longing? Is it food? Is it clothing? Is it your own, how you um, are so fit? You present yourself as a, an amazing specimen? And again, certainly these things aren't bad, but what are you dwelling on? What is your eye focused on? And what is that bringing into your, yourself? Is it light? Is it eternal things? Or is it darkness, temporal things? Is it rotten things? You can see, God wants your treasure to be imperishable. He is, he is rewarding. He is in secret. He is rewarding, but he is rewarding with imperishable things. He wants your treasure to be imperishable. So why would he give you things as a reward that are going to rot, die and rot? And again, going to keep saying this because I know people are going to misunderstand, maybe intentionally or not, that I'm saying that God doesn't provide for our, our earthly needs. He does. He is providing all the time for us. 
But that is not his end goal. And the, the truth is that people do die of starvation. People do go without clothing in this world. But that is still part of what God is doing in this world. He will provide for us on this earth until he is ready to clothe us eternally. Until he's ready to bring us into the real feast, the marriage feast. That is what we should be focusing on. It's only in our prosperous modern time that we have this weird idea that somehow God is going to make us full all the time and have us be clothed all the time and that our earthly needs are the things that he's the most concerned about. That is not what he's concerned about. This is like we've got this eternal feast, this, this eternal garment of righteousness waiting for us. And we're so concerned with earthly food and earthly clothing. It's like we're on our way to this party where you know there's going to be like filet mignon and you know all the all the sides and fixings that you could possibly. I mean, if you don't like steak, whatever, lobster. Uh, if you're a salad person, then imagine the greatest salad you'd ever eaten. I don't know, whatever. Comparing it to earthly food is kind of ridiculous, but the best meal you could possibly imagine, dressed up to the nines, enjoying this time with all the people you love and, and your father who's provided this for you. You're on your way to this meal, and you keep stopping at hot dog stands, like crummy hot dog stands. Not good hot dogs either. Like, you know byproduct hot dogs, greasy little stands that are going to make you sick. And you're thinking, well, my, my father would want me to be provided for in full. And he's saying, look, you're filling yourself up with garbage. And I have something so much better for you. We get way too caught up with these things. And I will say it again. God wants us to, or he's not saying that we can't eat good meals here on earth and that we can't dress nicely. He's not saying that we should completely abandon those things. But I think way too often, we lie to ourselves, telling ourselves that we are, oh, we're just, we're just using these things, but we're really focused on, on the things of God when that's not really the case. We are so serving the master of this earth. Do not be anxious. Do not be anxious because you know that even if you starve, even if you go hungry and you are naked and you die you are clothed in the righteousness of Christ and your food is the word of God and you will be at the wedding feast in heaven where truly none will be hungry again and will all be arrayed in splendor So I don't, I don't know if this passage is encouraging to you in the way that maybe you've always thought it was encouraging to you. Um, but I think it is encouraging to me in a way that goes far beyond that kind of temporal encouragement. Because we are all going to die. But unlike the birds of the field, and the, and the flowers, All right, it says, it says the, the flowers, he clothes the grass, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven. But we are eternal. 
we will, our bodies will die, but we will go on. And that is where we will find our true feast, where we will find our true clothing. So my conclusion is this, and I'm sorry if I've been a little confusing. I hope what I'm saying makes sense. Um, and I don't want to minimize earthly needs, but I think we must, we must focus where Christ is telling us to focus and is not on earthly provision. And I think that's clear when you look at the whole scope of what is being presented in the Sermon on the Mount and not just this passage by itself. So my, my conclusion is this. We don't worry because we are thinking too deeply and looking too far ahead, but because our thoughts are too shallow and our vision too nearsighted. Right? And you might say, but, but he says, don't, don't look too far ahead. That's not what he says. He says, don't be anxious about tomorrow. He's not saying don't think about tomorrow or the future eternity. He's saying don't be anxious about tomorrow. It is secured. One way or another, God will either be providing for you here or you will die as we all die and he will be providing for you eternally. He will provide. Praise God for his sovereignty in our lives and how he works that out in our provision. Let's pray. Father, God, please help us. We, we cast our eyes on things and we dwell and gaze on things that are rotting. That even as we put them into our bodies are already decaying. We use them up break them down, and then we need more. But God, you promi promised us something so much greater. Eternity with you, where there is no death, there is no decay, where you are our treasure, and you clothe us in your righteousness. Please help us to remember that that is what we truly need. Help, help us want Help us desire, help us to gaze on and worship things that put light into our bodies and not darkness. Our wanters are broken, God. Fix, fix us, God. Help us to see you for who you are and your glory for what it is so that we can truly know what life, what treasure, what food, what clothing really is. We pray all of these things in Christ's name. Amen. Have a great day, everyone. I will, I will see you again.